Hello, I'm Carly McAvoy. I wanted to show you how to find measures of central tendency and variance on the TI-36X Pro. So we're talking about mean, median, mode, um, standard deviation, all those things. So I have it typed out on the computer screen because I will post these notes for my students. So if you'd like to just have the notes and have those to refer to without having to go back and find a video, that would might be a nice choice for you. I'm going to enter the data that we see up here and then when I do that I, these are the results that I should see in my computer um, from in my calculator from the results. But let's take a look at the actual calculator to do that. So in this case I'm going to use the data that was given on screen and I need to enter all of that and I will always whenever I'm starting off I want to make sure that I don't have old data floating around or values in there that are going to make things uh, nasty for me. So I hold down the on button and I hit clear twice and that just clears out all the memory. The first thing I'm going to do is enter the data and the data button is right here. So I'm going to click on data and I'm ready to enter and it's going to automatically go into the L1 uh, column and the data that I had was 69 and once I enter a data value to get it into my column I can either hit enter down at the bottom or I could use the down arrow key here in the silver uh, navigation button so if I hit down it's going to bunch that right up into this into the column for me the next value was 91 and I'm going to use the enter key and I'm going to go ahead and use the enter key for the rest of these because it keeps my hand out of the video so um, I just start to enter all my data. Each time I enter a data value, I hit enter or down arrow to get that in. After 160, I have 259, 192, 371, 264, 234, 386, 334, 222, 245, and zero. Now make sure when you enter that last data value that you hit enter and get that actually into your column. That's a common mistake. Once we have all the values entered, now we're ready to let the calculator do the calculating for us. So we're going to hit once this stat button that, that says the stat above data. Since it's above that button, we're going to hit the second function. So we're going to hit second function in data. And now we have some choices and I want it to do one variable stats calculation so I'm going to use the down arrow to go down to number two and then hit enter. Now what happens is it's going to flash and it's showing me L1 and what that means is that hey your data is in L1 at least we assume it is and so I did put my data in L1 so that's where I want it. If I had put it in L2 I could scroll over and say no use L1 or L2 or L3. But by default, it's going to go into L1, and that's what I want. So I'm going to hit the down button or the enter to get down to the next line, and that says frequency. And the frequency is 1. That's automatic. If I had different frequencies, I would use um, a different um, column, but 1 is good for me. And I'm going to hit enter again, and then I'm going to say calculate. Now what it calculates is all these things, and some of these you may not know what they even are, but this is what you're going to get, and you need to be able to find what you need out of there. N equals 15 means that 15 data values were entered. That X bar is the mean, whether you're talking about sample or population, we can use, um, we're only talking about a sample here, of course, of the flights, I think it was. And then we have the sample standard deviation, we have the population standard deviation, we have the sum of all the x or data values and the sum squared and the minimum value, the first quartile, the median value, the third quartile, maximum value, and then it goes back up to the top. So any of those things that you're looking for, you could have right there. Let's say that after you get any of the values that you want, you also wanted variance, which did not show up on our list. We can just take the standard deviation because the standard deviation squared gives us the variance and I can hit enter and then I can push squared on my calculator that x squared button and this does put this into my data value column 
but I'm finished with recording all that so I don't care if I have an extra piece of data in there and that gives me 11,465 as my variance. If you didn't want that in there all you'd have to do is scroll back up to that data value and hit delete right here and that's going to delete that data value and take it back out of there but you can find variance very easily that way. Alright, have a fantastic day and we'll see you next time.